Hi, this is your host Sapin Bhartia and welcome to our new episode of topic of this month T3M and today we have two guests from Ubicube, Ahanath Force, Head of Product Management at Ubicube and Damien Piche, Compliance Senior Expert once again at Ubicube. Damien, Arnaud, it's great to have you both on the show. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We have covered uh, Ubicube before, so our audience, they do know about the company. But since we are talking about security compliance this month, so let's just remind our viewers, what is Ubicube all about? What do you folks do? Uh, so in Ubicube, what we try to do is to simplify really the journey to the cloud. Um, to make it safer, to make it simpler, and to make it compliant. So, you know, right now, uh, the complexity is everywhere. Uh, different technology, different providers, uh, hybrid environments. So from the company perspective, this move and the transition to the cloud is quite painful. So we try really to remove the complexity by abstracting all those difficult concepts to at the end manage the, the cloud in a different way by keeping in mind also the, this challenge of the security and the compliance. Compliance is really a hard challenge for any of company and especially when they are using uh, several cloud providers and you know being compliant with only one of them is, is already hard. So imagine if you are using hybrid cloud or multiple technologies. And so with this abstraction level that we provide with the uh, cloud club, we can make compliance easier because most of the time, this is the same information you need, whether we are running on LWS or G Cloud or whatever. And this is what we provide a unique point and a unique single platform when you can collect all of this information that you will need for your compliance and your security. What kind of compliance we are talking about here? We are mainly talking about compliance in terms of security or privacy based on SOC 2 or ISO 2701. HIPAA, HTS for French market, for instance. And these standards uh, are quite the same, uh, actually. We, we, need, uh, we need to collect many of information to make sure that the controls are, um, are um, working well. Uh, the user access review is made. The, the, the security for the design are, uh, are performed. Uh, and what we are trying to solve is the difficulty to keep that level of conformity. When a developer is developing a new software, he just wants an environment to make it work. And, um, and he is not always aware about all of this security control that he needs uh, for any of these standards. So what we bring here is just a simple way of saying, OK, this is your environment. You need to run on this standard, for instance, uh, SOC 2. So you, you choose your standard, what type of environment you need, and you just deploy on any uh, of cloud provider. When we talk about cloud, first of all, cloud itself, and if you look at cloud, we are looking at hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, cloud. companies is still running mainframe, so they are still mixing a lot of things. The edge computing is also there. So cloud itself becomes very complicated. Uh, developers get overwhelmed with a lot of latest technology than we talk about. And when you three com throw compliance into the mix, it makes things even more complicated because some things are even more specialized, which can be, you know, kind of a lot of, you know, industries which have been around, which are very, very, you know, regulated industries. They are also some of the industries which are reluctant to these technologies. What do you see are the kind of, you know, challenges that these companies, developers face, and how do you folks kind of lower the barrier of entry for them so that they don't get overwhelmed because this is an issue where they cannot compromise with, you know, they can lose their whole license, you know, to even operate in industry and that can be big risk for their image as well. Uh, just, just talk about the complexity uh, there. So you're right. I mean, compliance on monocloud uh, by default is challenging. Uh, the, topic, the topic itself is difficult to understand. But indeed, when you move to hybrid mode, you add an extra layer of complexity. So I will probably mention two points here. The first is, is the shift on the responsibility. You know, all those control you have related to the security virtualization shift to the cloud services. So you need to understand those change and define all the security scenarios. And, and sometimes companies try to implement the, the private cloud security control into the public cloud. And, and in some cases, it's quite impossible. They don't have maybe the right talent, the, the security expert, and, and the target platform globally are difficult to understand. And this is also what we want to do with our platform is to bring simplification. Um, 
the second challenge I will say is to really perform a, a full compliant checks on the remote platform. Um, you know, the providers, they have their own security lock implemented. So also the goal for us is to access those remote platforms and to have really a full picture of the compliance and not having partial results. Uh, and this is also what we are trying to address is whatever the number of cluster or nodes you have, we want really to have a global idea of the compliance. As we are talking about you know, these challenges, uh, we should also look at culture or people side of this, because as you're talking about, sometimes companies try to implement that model from traditional IT kind of thing in the cloud native world. Uh, we are also looking at the people because people, we are still talking about, you know, move to DevOps, DevSecOps, SREs, you know, internal teams, you know, whose responsibility does it become, you know, because we have like kind of break old silos, but we are also kind of creating new silos. So when it comes to compliance, whose problem, where does the buck stop there? There are several things here. The, the first, there are a set of controls that are decided by the company itself. Uh, if they are following any standard, any security standard, they will define a set of controls. And the, the real challenge will be to make all the team aware of these controls. And being honest, this is impossible to ask to DevSecOps or whatever to know perfectly all of these controls and what need to be implemented. So this is what Cloud Club provides. This is the ability sorry, uh, to define these controls and, and make the, the developer totally free of deploying any of his environment. Uh, he, he just had to say, OK, what type of standard do I need to follow here? And, and I deploy, and the product will automatically perform all of security controls and bring the compliance information we need. Um, and for some reasons, he, he, he might want to add some specific controls and he will have this possibility as well without breaking the compliance. For instance, if you set a rule which is in uh, opposition with the standard requirement, the product will say, okay, this is not possible on that environment because you are hosting health data, so you cannot remove this, uh, this security control, for instance. So we will have the possibility to make sure that this environment is compliant with the standard we follow. Is there any specific persona, just the way we talked about DevSecOps, DevOps, SREs, like, you know, security and compliance, you need your, any specific persona within Teams who is responsible for ensuring that the things are in place so that, you know, as you deal with the developers teams or operators teams or SRE teams, that, you know, it doesn't get lost. Is there any specific persona within companies who is responsible for compliance? Compliance is a matter of everyone. I mean, uh, there is not only one person who is in charge in the, in the global compliance, but this is also the reason why the awareness is really important uh, when we are talking about compliance. Because we have to make sure that all of your teams is aware of the standards of the company, but we cannot ask for every one of them to be aware of all of the security controls that need to be implemented. So there is a first step when you decide of all of these controls to be set up, and then you delegate the availability or the possibility for developers, for instance, or SRE or DevOps to deploy this environment uh, without having to consider or to think about um, all, all of these controls that have to be set up. As we were talking earlier about complexity, we are also talking a lot about automation. You know, manual processes cannot deal with that. Uh, so talk a bit about the role of automation. We can also talk about AI ML if you know, that is also being leveraged there. When it comes to compliance and helping teams, once again, depending on the industry, they remain compliant. The automation will raise up some new risk because, you know, with automation, when a mistake is done, the, the mistake is automated. So this is one of the major risks we have here. So uh, this is also the reason why the way that you will deliver all of your cloud services need to have a validation, some of validation step, you know. Um, when, when you deploy, you can go on to production at first stage. You need to make some tests. You need to make sure that uh, you are uh, in line with all of your security um, before going live on production. So 
the automation uh, won't el eliminate this uh, this validation step that are still needed. Uh, whatever, if you do it manually or automatically, you need to have these steps of validation before going online. And, and, and the thing is that the automation will just make you save time uh, just to, in terms of security, just to make sure that all of these tests are okay and you can go on the, on the next step. And this is what we bring here. We, 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 just, we just make safe time for, for developers uh, from the development to the go-live production. Oh, no. You want to add anything? Yeah, I mean, uh, probably I will link automation and remediation because it, it, this is the topic that are linked together uh, for, for the people that are doing compliance every day. This is something that is on the daily, weekly basis. And, and through the platform, in fact, you can choose. You can choose to do, do things manually or with automation. I would say probably for the security expert that would like to keep their hand on the security control, may, may, maybe applying those manual recommendations will help them to keep their hand of the, of the control of the platform. But honestly, the, some, some people that are using the platform are not necessarily security or compliance experts. And this is where our platform will help them to really uh, uh, have an environment that is green and clean to deploy application without be certified to any uh, uh, provider program. We are also kind of going through this phase where a lot of companies who like kind of overhired during COVID, they are now laying off employees, cost cutting is, how much impact are you seeing there might be there on this compliance? But once again, depending on the industry, they cannot compromise with compliance. But do you see uh, any challenges that are going to be for these teams? Or you're like, hey, this is something which is not going to be affected by any cost cutting or any layoffs? Even if compliance should not be, you know, the the thing that you that you consider at the very end of your process, unfortunately, the, the more the, the, the teams are getting smaller and, and the more the compliance is impacted. Because you are right, uh, people don't have enough time to cover all of compliance requirements and they are very numerous. So this is a, a hard challenge. And this is also the reason why Cloud Club has been built to, 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 to save time and to make and not to waste time by defining, okay, for this environment, this is the standard we need to follow. This is all of security control we need to set up. And, and, and this is all of the information you will need for compliance. This is a fully automated process, meaning as soon as you deploy your environment, you have both security controls that are in place and compliance information. And so even if the, the, the team is really small, uh, it doesn't impact the, the product itself. We keep having this information we need for compliance. But you are right in, in the other environment when the when the team is getting smaller, compliance unfortunately is the one which is the most impacted aspect. You know, when it comes to compliance, of course, you have to implement it. You have to maintain it for the life cycle of you know whichever application, whatever workload is there. Number two is as companies may enter new markets or sometimes regulations also change for political reasons. So they have to keep up with that. It's not that they have implemented something is done. So, so it's a whole life cycle, which can be very dynamic. So talk a bit about how does, you know, how do you folks help those teams in not just implementing, but also evolving over time? The, this continuity topic is really crucial. Uh, infrastructure, infrastructure globally are not static. Um, so it, you, having your infrastructure respecting the standard, the day one is fine but what about in one month what about in one year for example so an expert um, security expert I, I are acting like that every day they, they maintain the security in the daily basis and compliance should follow the, exactly the same schema um, so for us at the time one environment is created all the system is configured to scale in compliance scan in every location in daily basis and the results are collected in a one unique dashboard so at the glance you have really a nice ID how close or how far you are uh, compliant to the standard you choose. And you're right, whatever the environment will change in the future, because an environment can move, you can deploy new app, you can scale, you can re-host, uh, you can migrate, the system will continue to work. So we maintain really the compliance status in the time. And we also offer the, the possibility for, uh, to update the standards itself. For instance, ISO 2701 has just released a new version and uh, last year, so the, the software will automatically integrate the new standards and raise up the new requirements 
and say, okay, guys, on this topic, uh, we, we don't have the information or we, we don't have the security control set up for this specific standard. And here you have two options. Either you, you do it manually, saying that you're, anal you're analyzing what is needed and you, and you set up the, the, the control, the security control, or the software can take some remediation action to keep it compliant. Um, if you need to add, uh, I don't know, uh, separated networks, VLAN, whatever, we, you, you can have some recommendation and delegate to the product to, to, to integrate and set up this new control to fit with the new standard and the new version. Anad, Damien, thank you so much for uh, taking time out today to talk about uh, this topic, the compliance. I really love your insights there. Thank you so much for sharing those with me. And I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.